Well, Martin, welcome back to Woking. You've been away uh, in Russia. Tell us about your experiences there. Yeah, I've been away for five weeks. I was working for Australian television covering the World Cup. I did, I think, 20 commentaries in about nine different venues. <laughs> a lot of travelling, but as you all know, it was a wonderful tournament and uh, it was a privilege to be part of it out there. One thing I didn't really get the, the vibes for, of course, is what was going on back here. I kept getting messages from various people who were telling me that uh, the place was going crazy and then I uh, bumped into some friends from Sky Sports who were uh, working with Sky Sports News out there and they showed me what the Sky Studios had been totally uh, redesigned to support England for a few days. So i um, very proud of what England achieved and um, as a broadcaster, you know, being chosen to work in a World Cup is a bit like a player being chosen to play in it. So it's my 11th World Cup as a commentator and it was it was as good as any of that I've ever been before. Whether I was, <laughs> I don't know, but uh, it's nice to be back. I landed back at uh, about half past eight on Monday morning, and that uh, by half past eight on Monday night, I watched the lads train and joined in and done some of the coaching with Ian Dyer, and um, it was good because obviously I don't know all the new players. I've got to know them. I do know them now, and I'm looking forward to um, seeing them turn out and play well, hopefully for the club against uh, Chelsea on Wednesday. Yeah, we'll come to that in a moment, if that's okay. Um, can you just ask, lots of things we've read over here during the World Cup have been about how fantastic the Russian people have been and it was so completely unexpected mm. what it was like over there. Is that your experience as well? Yes, I don't think we'll ever get told the true story as to how Russia got the World Cup, but what we should never forget is the way they've staged it. They um, uh, opened their doors, opened their hearts and made it a very hospitable experience going around the country and it's a huge country as you all know and um, to see it perhaps outside of Moscow was, was maybe the greatest experience outside of St Petersburg and Moscow which are the cities maybe. Paul Elmer who's a long term servant of the Working Football Club just told me when I got back today that he was out there for um, one of those river cruises uh, before the World Cup started and, and I can only compliment him him on his choice because it's probably not on everyone's bucket list to go to, to Russia but I would say to anybody who's watching if you get the chance to go and the river is the way to do it every every host city seemed to be on the Volga and it was um, it was all part of the if you like the, the perspective and the, the panorama really of the World Cup which was which was amazing but the people were were fantastic I think they enjoyed entertaining us and we certainly enjoyed being entertained by them and the, the, the supporters I also got to say this that the supporters from around the world it, it's amazing I mean as we all know there weren't perhaps quite as many England fans there as there could have been probably because of slightly fears about the, the kind of World Cup it, it might have been and it certainly wasn't in any way violent or threatening um, but the um, I don't think the South Americans were ever told that because they got there in force and uh, the pageantry around the place, it, it's, it is an amazing thing and I, I do hope England, obviously I've lived through a World Cup in this country and maybe not many of you watching have, it's an amazing experience and I know the talk about us getting it in 2013 or bidding for it in 2030 I should say, 2030, um, would be, um, it would be wonderful if we did get it and I hope I might not be commentating on it then, but I do think uh, it, it's, it's, a, it's a wonderful experience and, and the Russian people got a lot out of entertaining us I'm sure. Thank you for that. And uh, let's turn to matters woking. But if we start with um, tomorrow night's game, I, I, were you instrumental in that being arranged? Not at all. Uh, there were certain fixtures that were in the, the calendar when we came here, Dowson, Ian and I. And, um, the one that I've been responsible for is Salford, really, because as everybody knows, I work with Gary Neville and uh, very close with the other members of the class of 92 and I commentated on them when they were the class of 92. Uh, so uh, they, um, we were at Hampton. We played Salford three times. Uh, we went up there once, and they came down to uh, the Beavery twice. I think there was we won one nil up there. They won one nil down at, at Hampton, and there was a one all draw at Hampton. So it's been very tight. But of course they've moved up, um, and they're now very full time. They've got new manager and Graham Alexander. And I saw Gary a couple of times in the World Cup, uh, and basically, you know, they, they are strengthening, like um, uh, we talk about the, the money that, um, say, Billericke have in our division, but Salford have uh, much more than that, and they're, they're using it well. They're, they're great guys, the class of 92, it's a privilege to 
to be in their company and see the football ambition and good luck to them and that'll be a great test for us but that that's the one that I arranged whereas um, I think the Chelsea I think Jeff probably did it before before we came but we're delighted to have it and it will be interesting to see who plays on the list that we've been, submit, been submitted the club Callum hudson Adoy's on it now his brother Bradley played for us at uh, Hampton and Bradley scored two in the quarter-final playoff win over Truro two in extra time actually to turn 1-1 into 3-1 and then at the final whistle, I went across to congratulate him, but he went across to see Callum, his, his younger brother, of course won the World Under-17 Cup with, um, with England. So, uh, so we know him a little bit through Bradley. So if he plays, now I've commentated him in the, in the Premier League already, so he has already uh, got a Premier League CV. Uh, but he's on the list. So he'd be, uh, he and a number of other players that won the Youth Cup last season I think that will be the, the thrust of the team and we'll wait to see on the day when the new manager is being unveiled at the uh, Cobham training ground whether he might pop along to have a look but I, I have no knowledge, absolutely no knowledge that that might be the case but if I was him I would certainly come and watch the lads play in the evening but we'll have to wait and see if he does come we'll look after him properly Of course and uh, finally can we um, talk on about a much more important matter which is uh, going to involve you putting a fair amount of effort in tomorrow afternoon in the the 50 lap challenge, is that what it's called? Um, no, I, I mean to be honest, uh, Dowson and Ian will run and they're of an age where they should run and uh, don't forget, uh, I played in working reserve team here when I was 58 I played in a capital league game thanks to Glenn Cockrell's generosity and we won 3-0 by the way and, and so, uh, that, but the running stopped pretty soon after that so I'll, I'll plod round and um, I'm not worried at all about it I may be stupid, I did 50 laps at Hampton in March in the snow so um, alright, it'll be a bit warm here. <laughs> but this is a football ground, you've got to remember I love, this is my first football ground where I first came when I was 8 years old to watch Woking and beat Kingstonian 4-1 which I used to remind everybody at K's when I was working there with Dallas so it will be a pleasure to spend, it'll probably take me three hours, three and a half hours, to be going around. I'll have all the memories of all the great players that I've watched here and the great times and pretty some dark times as well, I have to say, um, when working, working weren't doing so good, probably before Jeff got hold of them and pulled them out of the, uh, the wilderness. So it will, be a, it will be a pleasure. If you can support us, um, the money all goes towards the, uh, the playing side of the club, towards the budget and... Uh, uh, obviously, the more we can have, the more we can hopefully you trust us to invest it wisely. I think, obviously, I've not had too much doubt, and I've talked a lot on the various phone lines from Russia to Kingfield, but um, he's acquired some really good players, and it was great on Monday night to watch them in action and, and to coach them, and I'm looking forward to seeing them playing a game. Uh, hopefully, I'll be awake during the match. Having done 50 laps, of course, I might be uh, in a... In a comatose state but no, I'm looking forward to it and thanks for those who have supported us already a great gratitude and those who might spare the odd fiver please uh, it's a good cause thank you very much for your time this afternoon we look forward to seeing you tomorrow